But right here starts the compound probability. So let's take a look at this problem right here. This says, what is the probability of randomly selecting somebody who's in Math 102 and is female? That could be written with this intersection sign, a symbol that looks like an upside down U. And this is red. What's the probability of randomly selecting somebody that's in Math 102 and is female? Well, let's take a look at somebody that, what people fit those, that, both of those categories, being in Math 102 and being female. Well, Math 102 are all these right here all these people. Being female is all these people, but who are the people that satisfy being in Math 102 and being female? That's these 10 people right here. So total number of people that satisfy both of these uh, events, being in Math 102 and being female, is 10 out of, we're looking at a probability, so it's 10 out of 175. And then I would just divide that and get that answer as a decimal. So the answer to this problem is 10 out of 175. Again, the reason is, is because we looked at all these. And these are all the people that are in Math 102. Then we looked at all these. And all these people are the people that are female. And which people satisfied both of these categories? These 10 people right here. So your probability is 10 out of the total, or 10 out of 175. This could be also written in a sentence. What percentage of students in this table above here are female 102 students? The understood word between female and the word 102 is the word and. When you say are female 102 students, you're really saying female and 102 students. So this would be 10 out of 175. You can show uh, this, uh, well, we'll do one more problem before we, we show this. We want to look at uh, OR. That's the one that I want to show the Venn diagram for. Actually, we, I can talk about it back here with the AND. If I say that all 175 people are in this box here, my sample space consists of 175 people, and I put all the Math 102 students in one group here, so in this circle is all the Math 102 students, and in all this circle is my female students, then this intersection right here, this place where they overlap, are these 10 students. So this would be the Venn diagram that shows this. All right. Let's take a look at this one. What's the probability of a student being in Math 102 or being female. And we would write that with the union symbol right here. It looks like a U. It means union, but you read it as or. So this is red. What's the probability of somebody being in Math 102 or being female? Well, what we would do here, it means that they only have to satisfy one of these conditions. We'll count you if you're in Math 102. So if you're a guy in Math 102, you get counted. You also get counted if you're a female in Math 102. You also get counted if you're, a f if you're a female in any math class. So as long as you satisfy one of these conditions, you're counted. So what I would do is count up all the Math 102 students. Then I'd count up all the female students. And let's take a look at that here a second. And let's go ahead and get the, uh, get the answer here somewhere. Let me see if I can get a little bit of room here on this. And, uh, I think that's pretty close. So the answer to this problem would be that the probability of 102 or female is equal to, well, I'd count up all those students that are in Math 102, which there are 30 of those. Let's take a little scroll up here. How many are in Math 102? 30 of them out of the grand total of 175, so that would be 30 out of 175. And I'd add on to that all those students that are female, because they get counted. Well, how many female students do we have? 95. So that would be 95 out of 175. Now let's take a look at this before I go on. Here I even give you the formula that we need to do. We need to subtract off the intersection. The reason is, is because we counted all those people that were in Math 102. That's these 20 and these 10 people, total of 30 people. Then we counted up all the people that were in that were female. That's these 10 people again, plus these other 20, 40, and 25 students that were in other math classes. But the thing is, these 10 people here, 
that are female and Math 102 students, they got counted twice. They got counted once because they were in Math 102, and they got counted again because they're female. We don't want to count people twice, so we have to subtract these female Math 102 students off. So we need to subtract off the intersection, 102 and female. So in other words, we need to subtract off those 10 students, and we need to subtract off that probability, which in other words is 10 out of the grand total of 175. Well, they all have a common denominator of 175, so now it's just doing the arithmetic. 30 and 95 is 125, and 125 minus 10 is 115. So the answer to this problem would be 115 out of 175, and at that point I would use a calculator and switch it to a decimal or maybe a percent. And the reason why this is done again is because if this is your sample space, we counted all these Math 102 students. That's everybody in this circle. That includes these people here. Then we counted all the students that were female. That's everybody in that circle, and that again includes everybody here. So these people got counted twice. So for everybody to be counted once, I need to subtract off this intersection. So they can only be counted once. Okay. Now, the formula that works all the time on this is, in general, with, with two events, we would just say that the probability of A and B whatever those two events are, A and B, we would say that equals the probability of A plus the probability of B, the second event, and then we'd have to subtract off the probability of A and B, the intersection. So that's a formula right there that you should definitely know, and uh, we'll, you will definitely use it a good bit. And, um, this course, especially on chapter three and the test that's on chapter three and four. So um, this is a useful formula. This actually doesn't come up in the book until section three three, but uh, it's they all kind of tie together here, three two and section three three. Now one other idea is mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means two events are mutually exclusive if there is nothing in their intersection. These two events are not mutually exclusive because there are 102 female students, females and 102. There are people that satisfy both those conditions. But if you say, what's the probability of me randomly selecting a person that is female and taller than seven foot? Probably you're not going to have anybody that's in that situation there where they're taller than seven foot and also female. So they would have two separate groups. Here's your people that are seven foot tall, and here are your females. So there would be nothing in the intersection. So another name for mutually exclusive, which is an important term, is disjoint. And when two events are disjoint, that means that there's nothing in their intersection. So in general, here again is the formula for the probability of A or B. It's the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. But if they're disjoint, mutually exclusive, then there's nothing in their intersection, so it would just be the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now we'll get into conditional probability, which is in section 3.2 uh, on the next video. This section has really been more about section 3.3.